Everything we do is going to be about winning. Okay, we're going to learn to do things the right way, and that's the only way we're going to do them. Because if it doesn't help us, we're not doing it, man. That's just as simple as it gets. Win the Super Bowl. That's good. I mean it, too. You know, I, I, one of the things that, that the only reason you become a head coach in this league, in my opinion, is to win. That's it. That's the bottom line. If you do it for any other reason, you're wrong. Hey, football fans. Welcome to the Washington Command Center. So today we're kicking off a new series, Commanding Excellence, where I go over and compare possible draft targets that might be able to fill the same or similar roles within our team to try to figure out who would be the best prospect to begin this new era of Washington football, an era where this proud franchise can once again command respect. And what better way to kick off this new era than subscribing here to the Washington Command Center so you can find your way back to some of the most opinionated and ice-cold calculated takes on all things Washington Commanders. While you're at it, ring that bell, hit that like button. It's free to do, and it means a lot. So, first off, the NFL is massively trending towards more and more play from the nickel formation. With the passing game growing and growing with the current rules, along with the sheer amount of receiving talent coming out of college, teams are passing more than ever, putting more receivers on the field, and as a result, teams are pulling linebackers off the field and throwing extra secondary players on the field to try to keep up, which everybody's increasing how often they do this, how often they're in nickel. Now, there are teams like the Bills that are ahead of the curve that use nickel as their base formation. And Ron Rivera has expressed a desire to follow the Bills' lead in doing so. And through his first two seasons here, we've seen Ron and Jack already on the high end of nickel use as far as the league as a whole goes. And we saw Landon Collins transition to that big nickel role last season, you know, with solid results. But Landon Collins in many ways lacked the coverage abilities, you know, for making the formation change, you know, the ones you're making the formation change for in the first place. Like, he's not a great coverage guy. So with him gone anyway... And Ron's plans, you know, hinging on filling that position, it should definitely be towards the top of the list when targeting players in this draft. Along with, you know, an elite linebacker, since we're only going to have two on the field. But, you know, linebacker talk is for another video. This is about the nickel. And most teams aren't dedicated to, you know, transitioning to nickel as their base. So they just throw an extra corner or a safety out there. And that usually results in a trade-off in the run game. You know, they're going to have a weakness in the run game with a corner out there in most cases. But we are dedicated to making the transition. And with that, it should be treated as finding a key piece to this defense. Just like Finding a nose tackle if you run a 3-4, like it's important. And we should focus on securing an elite caliber nickel defender. You know, not just a guy that gives us an event advantage in the passing game, but one that doesn't create a massive weakness against the run. And that brings us to comparing our guys here. Kyle Hamilton versus Jalen Petrie, you know, who would be the better target as a nickel. So, I'm going to start out here with Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, 6'4", 220 pounds, safety prospect from Notre Dame, with traits you just can't teach. 
and full transparency, Kyle Hamilton through most of this season was my favorite prospect in the entire draft. To the the point where I was in favor of packing it in and tanking all the way out after our loss to the Saints just to land this guy. And I know tanking for a safety is insane. And I admit, you know, kind of silly. But to me, Hamilton at that time represented a Derwin James type player, like a super versatile elite unicorn chess piece that could affect all three levels of the defense. You know, I thought he could be that rangy, deep free safety, come up, basically play linebacker, rush the passer, slot, you know, coverage. I thought he could do all that, but sadly, I don't think that's what he is. And that's something a lot of people are coming to realize, you know, rather through finding out that he's very much slower and less rangy than we thought, but also realizing he isn't quite the coverage guy either. You know, he's not going to be that elite rangy free safety that we thought he was. And he's not going to be an elite slot guy either. But he still very much has some great versatility closer to the line. You know, floating between that wheel linebacker position, the nickel, and the strong safety position. He's going to be able to, you know, float around there. And he has elite instincts and football intelligence. This guy knows what he's doing out there. That's part of the reason he looked so fast on tape is because he knew where the ball was going and he got a head start getting there. So he has that to go along with the elite size and length. And he's a guy that can plug right into that Landon Collins role as a big nickel and do everything Landon did better while also being able to drop back and do a better job in zone coverage he's still pretty good in zone coverage you just don't really want him manning up with faster slot receivers and he's going to make some plays with that length and those instincts or or we could you know play him in a more traditional will linebacker role like his Former teammate JOK is doing chasing down running backs and covering tight ends. He's, he he'll be really great for that. So any way you look at it, Hamilton will be a big improvement to the defense in an area of the defense that need you know is most in need of help. But he definitely checks boxes. You know of not being a run defense liability. He's great there, actually being an improvement there, even over Landon, while offering a boost to, you know, pass defense, where playing nickel, you know, that's what we're going for in the first place. But how big a boost is kind of the question that I'm. it's kind of eating at me about it. But is he the kind of player that's going to command respect from the opposing offenses? Or is he a guy that's going to command attention as a possible weakness to exploit? I'm not sure. But let's check out the competition here, see kind of what he's got going for him. That's Jalen Petrie, six foot, 200 pounds, out of Baylor. Played the nickel, the star. Like, this is a guy that plays that position. Now, at that size, six foot, 200 pounds, he doesn't have that traditional will linebacker flexibility that you get with Hamilton. But honestly, with Jamin Davis moving there, it's not a it's not something we need. Jamin Davis is going to be moving towards the will. And that's just a plus for Hamilton. So it's not something we need. It was just a plus for him. What Petrie does give us is elite production at the position we are looking to fill. He's already playing that nickel star position at Baylor and just rocking it and he's had a top three slot coverage grade in the power five for the last two seasons not allowing a single touchdown 
in his last three years at Baylor. Maybe ever. At least so far in the last, in the last three years, he hasn't allowed a touchdown. And he led all of college football with 47 defensive stops, 20 of which were passing stops, which is second most in all of college football. He also posted a 92.7 PFF run defense grade, which is awesome. Uh, 83.6 pass rush grade, tremendous for a six foot 200 pound guy with an overall PFF grade of 88.6. So over the last two seasons, he's allowed just a 51.1 passer rating against him and had a combined 30 tackles for loss in the last two seasons. This season, he was tied for seventh in all of college football with Leo Chanel, you know, that dude at linebacker, with 19 tackles for loss. There's no other secondary player even on the same planet as him when it comes to that. Nobody in college football had anything close to that. 19 tackles for loss is ridiculous. I think the closest is probably 12, maybe. And along with that, he had 56 solo tackles, 75 total. He had seven pass defenses, two interceptions, four sacks, three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries. Petrie came into college as an undersized three-star linebacker prospect. Then he took those linebacker instincts and that mentality and adapted himself to his new role as that star nickel slot player and massively improved his coverage abilities and molded into just about the perfect nickel prospect you can get. So if you can't tell already, I think I've made my choice. And I know it's tough to pick another prospect over the possible blue chip talent like Kyle Hamilton. But honestly, I think Petrie might be a legit blue chip talent too. You know, just in a slightly more niche position. And because of that, Petrie also comes with a massive added benefit of being able to trade back out of 11, add more draft picks to get more talent, and land him, who I think is the better fit, later. And I do think Petrie's buzz is getting to the point where we might have to consider taking him in the first if we can trade back far enough. Because he might make it to the end of the first round now, I'm thinking. Now, I'm beginning to think that that trade-back scenario with Kansas City in my last video, where we ended up with 29 and 30, might be a spot where we have to take Petrie and our future Mike. Like, I think that would be amazing. And I think that's a very realistic trade. And it would be great, in my opinion, with our, you know, second-round pick still being pretty early enough. I think we could move back there, you know, to pick up another pick. So, anyway, I really think Jalen Petrie is the kind of player that personifies what we are looking for as we command excellence moving forward in this new era of Washington football. An era where we take command of this division, then this conference, and finally command respect from the whole NFL. And if you want to find your way back to the most opinionated and ice-cold calculated takes on all things Washington Commanders, you can do that by subscribing here to the Washington Command Center. And remember to hit that like button, ring that bell, and if you watch this long, I love y'all. Peace.